cool. Hey guys, it's Devin here, and I'm sitting inside of this CR10 printer, which I'm reviewing today. If you follow just about any other 3D printer reviewer on YouTube, you may have already seen this machine. And people like it because it's cheap, under $400, it comes almost completely assembled, and it's got this huge 300 by 300 by 400 millimeter build volume. And you know what? I, I like it too. So today I'm gonna share with you guys what it's like to get this thing out of the box and running. I'll show you the things I've printed so far, and because I just hit 170,000 subscribers, I'm gonna give away one of these printers at the end of the video. So, stick around and let's give this thing a whirl. All right. The CR10 arrives in this relatively small box, which made me think that there would be a lot more assembly than there actually is. The base is pre-assembled, and then you've also got this power brick slash controller, and a box filled with all the little tools and accessories that you're gonna need to assemble this and to use it thereafter. The included assembly instructions are pretty junk, but we're in the age of YouTube, so that's not a big deal. I can just look it up. And then this top part of the printer is the last thing in the box. The first thing I did was flip over the base, as people have said that these bottom bearings can sometimes be loose, but in my case, everything fit tight and the belt was also nice and tight. So no problems there. I'll get out the little fasteners here, put on those washers, and then I'll align this top section with the holes in the bottom frame. These four Allen screws hold the top and bottom together, and I'm just gonna start out by screwing them in by hand, and then we can make sure it's nice and tight using this included Allen key. For a little extra strength, each side has these acrylic brackets. All you've gotta do is align these locking nuts and then place those in the grooves in the aluminum frame. Then we'll go ahead and tighten those with another included Allen wrench, and you just wanna make sure that those nuts actually twist into the locking position. That's how you know they're sturdy, and it also means that everything is aligned correctly. And here's the bracket for the other end, basically the same without that limiter switch. After that, it's just time to plug in all the cables. They're all labeled, so this is E for extruder, and then we've got the X ones for the X stepper motor here on the side, as well as the X limiter switch, which is hidden behind this little acrylic panel. And we'll do the same thing with the cables for the Z motor and the Z limiter switch, which is kind of hard to reach here, but not a big deal. And then we've got the Y limiter switch and the Y motor here on the back of the frame. I'll also make sure to connect this PTFE tube between the hot end and the extruder. And finally, these big cables connect to the back of the power supply, controlling all those motors as well as the heated bed. These cables look similar, but they have a different arrangement of pins, so just make sure you're connecting the right ones. And of course, we wanna attach the power cord. Also, over here on the side, we've got a little switch that lets you change between 110 volts for the US or 220 for Europe. So just make sure you have that set to the correct voltage and then we'll attach the spool holder which just has these little two screws and it goes right into that power unit. All right, that's all the assembly. So now we're just gonna turn this thing on and make sure all the functions work. So I'll start by doing the auto home just to make sure that all the stepper motors are moving and the limiter switches are stopping it in the right place. And then I'll go ahead and set the temperature for the bed and the nozzle to make sure those heating elements work as well. The bed should take seven to 10 minutes to heat up and the nozzle even quicker than that. That works, so I'll go ahead and disable the steppers and cool down the heated elements. That way I can go ahead and level the bed. I'm gonna use this 0.1 millimeter feeler gauge to make sure the nozzle is the correct distance from the bed, but a regular old sheet of printer paper works just fine. I'll move the nozzle to each corner of the printer and then twist that screw underneath to raise the bed until there's just a tiny bit of friction between the nozzle and that feeler gauge. If I get each corner of the printer right, that should mean that the center is also leveled with that correct distance between the bed and the nozzle. Awesome. 
All right, we're almost there. We just gotta hit preheat PLA to get that nozzle nice and hot. And then we'll just slip on the provided spool of PLA and feed the filament through this tube on the side. I'll just keep pushing that through until the plastic is coming cleanly out of the nozzle. All right, that's it, time to print. So I'll insert the micro SD card and it already has this file included so I figured I'd give it a shot. It started out looking beautiful, but partway through the print, it kind of glitched out and the layers shifted. Of course, that made me a bit worried, but after watching it do the same thing a second time, I realized that it was probably just the G-code of that sample model that was corrupt. So I decided to slice my own file and try that out. But first, I removed the masking tape from the build plate, cleaned it off with some isopropyl alcohol, and then coated it with a bit of hairspray. That's gonna make a nice clean build surface for smooth bottom layers, and you don't ever have to replace masking tape, which is also nice. Here I am printing that trusty Benchy calibration model, and I sliced this in Simplify 3D using the built-in presets for the CR10 printer. As you can see, the result is a very beautiful Benchy, and it's darn near flawless. One of the best Benchies I've gotten off of a printer. All right, you know how I am with printer reviews. The Benchy looks good, so it's time to go big or go home. So my next print is this massive plume of smoke that I sculpted in VR for my Rocket Springo. And this thing nearly reaches the entire height of the printer. This was printed using a PLA PHA blend of filament by Melt Ink, which is meant to help with ease of printing, as well as creating slightly stronger parts than your standard PLA. After the glass cools down, the print pops off with nearly no resistance. And here's the final print. Another really stunning print off of this CR10. So this machine can print big, but I also wanted to see if it can print several small parts in one print. So I went ahead and printed out these modifications for the CR10 itself. And sure enough, it's another wonderful print. Here I am installing those modifications. This first one is a strain relief for the wire of the heated bed, which is something that people have said can fail. And then there's this other little attachment that guides the filament so it doesn't touch that greasy Z-axis rod. It's probably a good idea to have these modifications be some of your first prints on the CR10, so I'll have a link in the description so you can download those for free. Okay, here is the final piece that I printed for this review, and wow, it is beautiful. Once again, I'm using that Melt Ink PHA PLA blend, and I printed this giant vase I designed a while ago using vase mode. So this is a single layer thick, and I mean, I really don't know how the printer could have done a better job with this model. It just came out looking super silky smooth, the matte filament looks awesome, and well, this thing is giant. Needless to say, I'm very happy with how it came out. What can I say guys? I'm absolutely blown away by this printer. I mean, look at this, this thing is massive. I printed this in 11 hours and it looks amazing. And it was printed on a $400 3D printer. I just love how really impressive printers like this are becoming more user-friendly and more affordable. This thing is awesome and I have no hesitation right now recommending it to all of you if it's within your price range. If you want one right now, you can buy it using the link in my description with a little coupon code so you get a nice discount. And that's from GearBest. They're the ones who sent me this. And they're also gonna give one away for that wonderful price of 10 cents if you sign up for the giveaway, 170,000 subscribers, thank you. Do yourself a favor and sign up for that giveaway. Also, 370 bucks right now. You might as well buy it from GearBest. Worst case scenario, you end up with two of these magnificent printers, right? Not so bad. I just cannot wait to make more awesome, gigantic projects on this printer. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see all the things I come up with. But until next time, I'm Devin, this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired. Bing. It's
It's amazing, you guys. It's as big as 